So Microsoft have announced that the new planner is coming out in spring 2024 that combines Microsoft To Do, Microsoft Planner and Microsoft Project on the web. But is it now good enough to compete with Monday.com and ClickUp? Is it a Monday.com and ClickUp killer? Let's find out in this video. So Microsoft have had quite a complex way of managing tasks across the Microsoft ecosystem. If not last year, then certainly a couple of years ago, it seems like forever, the Microsoft announced, look, we just want one way. Wherever you put tasks across the Microsoft ecosystem, we want them all to feed back through into one place. And that intent has never really been realized. So any announcements that move that forward are really exciting because if you're using Microsoft 365 now, there are loads of different ways to record tasks. And they have got a little bit better in that most flow through into to do and therefore into planner or vice versa and there's an app in teams that's tasks by planner and to do but tasks planner to do's are all a bit confusing if you're in OneNote, then you can put outlook tasks which kind of syncs through and you can see that video here if you want to use OneNote to get tasks through into to do and planner before this comes out in spring 2024 obviously now they've got loop and loop components and components have got tasks which then go into planner but also you can put planner into loop and it's just for normal people doing normal jobs they probably just do not care and lots of my clients small and medium sized businesses and enterprises there's a gap in Microsoft's just normal task management offering and they just jump out and go into ClickUp and Monday.com. And by the time they've done that, they find actually that this is way easier to use than stuff in Microsoft land. It has better features and they've spent time building out like how they want things to work. And so then getting them back into Microsoft is pretty hard to recommend unless they're going to save significant amounts of licensing costs or it's going to be better coming to Microsoft. So it's been pretty difficult to recommend that people use Planner. And one of the main reasons people end up jumping out of Microsoft 365 ecosystem into Monday or ClickUp is largely because of one main thing, which Trello has got even in its free plan. So if you go into Trello and you move things around the board or someone makes a change to a card or anything that happens, you can see in the sidebar all of the changes that have happened since you were last in the board or even at any point in time you want to go through and see what's changed you can see what's happened microsoft planner didn't have anything like that when it was first released and then bizarrely microsoft made an update saying well we'll tell you how many changes have been made since you were last in the board so you can't see changes when you want and also you can't see what those changes are which is bizarre because microsoft must know what those changes are to know how many changes have been made, but then there's no way of finding out what they are. So if someone drags something around the screen by mistake, we've all done that with files and just dragged a file off into a different folder, like, ah, I didn't mean to do that. I just miscued the mouse or the trackpad. Same with Planner. If someone drags something or completes something, you know, it's completely open to that group. It's quite easy to complete someone else's tasks, to drag things around by mistake and you can't then see what has been changed. So with the best intentions, it is not fit for a business critical process where like if you're monitoring something through a Kanban board, which is exactly what Planner is, if someone's moved something by mistake or you're like, hang on, why is that move there? Where was it before? Who's done it? You can't find that out. And hopefully, let's say hopefully, Microsoft have showed that that is possible in the new Planner. Now, a bit of nuance, the new planner on the surface brings together Microsoft To Do, which is your place for personal tasks, Microsoft Planner, which is your place for group tasks, and Project on the Web, which is the place for proper project managers, dependencies, Gantt charts, managing workflow, workload, everything that people would jump out into Microsoft Project, which I guess is the, the main place that someone would go if they're doing like a full proper project. That's all coming into Planner. So projects on the web has been renamed as Planner, tasks by Planner and To-Do in Teams is being renamed as Planner, and To-Do, another bit of nuance we'll come on to later, that should be coming to Planner, although Microsoft is sort of egging themselves out and say, oh, nothing's happening to To-Do, it's still still staying around, which we'll have, uh, we'll have a chat about in a sec. But because Project on the Web is an extra license and that's coming into Planner, there's now Planner, which brings together all those things, 
but now it's split into planner and planner premium and pretty much planner premium is all of the things from project on the web but it's making it a bit more accessible in that it's all in one place because with microsoft trying to keep project on the web and planner that was itself confusing because there were some things that you would just expect projects on the web to do because it's extra and paid that it didn't do that planner does for free such as being able to have a task in project on the web and that flow through to someone's assigned to me tasks in to do or tasks by planner to do in teams which didn't happen all the time in project on the web until microsoft updated it so trying to rather try to keep two things updated it makes sense just bring it all in one and have a paid tier and a basic tier and so it's easy to keep everything in line so that's really exciting and some of the things that they've showed look quite cool such as having templates basic templates and, and premium templates hopefully the templates get better than what they showed i'm hoping just it's just a demo sort of bug a lot of the things they clicked on didn't actually change the template of the planner and even some of the templates showed how not to set up planner because you don't want a bucket that goes across some other field that already does that so quite often people make the mistake in planner to create buckets of coming up in progress completed it's like well planner's already got a, an in progress button which has not started in progress completed which you can change in the views anyway so you don't want to re replicate that in a bucket i would suggest but that said if some of the templates are working and better by the time it comes out people struggle with what to do a bucket and what to do a label and hopefully some of these templates will get you into that a lot easier and obviously microsoft's trying to upsell their planner premium so they've got some templates that are premium templates and then so that jumps you into like you can get a free trial of premium and then you can pay for premium and just get access to all of the functionality of planner premium so you get a grid view a board view like you do now you get the scheduled view which you do now that's all basic if you have got premium then you get some extra tabs so you get the timeline view which is what you'd be used to if you're using microsoft project a gantt chart with dependencies and if you drag stuff around it'll move all the dependencies for you show you the critical path etc you get people which you can kind of see in the basic but seems like it's going to be a bit easier to manage across people and workloads and you get goals which if you're a smb might be confusing if you've got viva goals which is like okrs cascaded down goals in project premium are just a subset of existing tasks in your plan that you then align to goals say well if we complete this this and this that will have hit our goal which interested in if you are a project manager watching this is that useful to you because every project manager i've worked with would have just grouped their tasks into buckets of well, what hits a milestone or a goal anyway so you know if you've hit that goal because it's everything under this particular bucket and so if you use the goals feature it doesn't do that for you you've got to recreate and say well here's a goal and then add manually all of the tasks that make up that goal which you've kind of already done in your timeline plan so i'm not sure how useful that goals bit is going to be but if you're interested in that then let me know in the comments below if you are a project manager hi i'm gavin jones from me time we're passionate about saving people time at work to do more of the things they love increase sales and well-being we help organizations work more efficiently together with internal collaboration happening to use the microsoft 365 ecosystem because you're already paying for it if you're interested in getting more at microsoft 365 then our most popular product is our modern workplace assessment where we'll come in see how you're working together and produce recommendations and report about how you could work better together and utilize more of the microsoft 365 ecosystem if you want further help after that with change management and training then we offer all of that as well if you're interested in a chat to see if we're a good fit to work together and if you're not sure where to start then book a call using the link in the description below if you've got over 20 knowledge workers or more if you are smaller than that, we've still got ways we can help with some cost effective training and access to me for Q&A. Check out some of the links to our free trial in the links below. Or if you just want some free help finding out how to avoid the problems 99% of companies make when they're setting up Microsoft 365, there's a free training course in the link below as well. You can do other cool things like setting work schedules for people to assign tasks on their days that they work and alongside some of the overlap with microsoft 365 copilot is if you get planner premium you get copilot in 
Planner. And I'm not sure if you get Copilot, whether you get Copilot and Planner, even if you don't have Planner Premium, which I'm sure Microsoft will sort out by the time it comes out. I'm really excited about Copilot in general. I'm not sure about Copilot in Planner because the things that they showed isn't like using Copilot, like, well, what do I need to do today? What's the most important things I need to do? It was more like, well, I can help me generate a plan or I can add tasks to an existing plan. And the example they showed was like, well, add tasks for a marketing campaign and it then puts loads of tasks in for you that would go into a generic marketing campaign, which I'm not sure I would want to do that. It's like, well, I know what tasks need to be done. An organization knows what tasks need to be done to launch a product or to launch a marketing campaign. And sort of what was missing in projects on the web and planner for that matter, was any way to have a user defined templates that you could then just pick from and start. And it doesn't look, at least from their announcement, happy to be wrong, or I hope I'm wrong, doesn't look like you can still do templates because you can't do those on projects on the web and you can't do those in planner and then bring them together. Doesn't look like they fixed that. So they've got some new generic templates that you can start with, but what would be more useful is to have an organization template say, look, for company X, we launch products in this way. We've got the same tasks, the same thing needs to happen to our ERP. Same things need to happen across marketing, supply chain, sales. We know what needs to be done. We just want to like say, now this is launching a new product, product Y, let's make a product Y plan without adding everything in manually. So I'm not sure the new templates do that and Copilot certainly doesn't do that because it's like, well, just you're just asking AI to come up with some random tasks for you. So rather than Copilot, it would be useful to have templates, I would suggest and hopefully Microsoft watch this and we'll put those in. If you think that's important, then let me know in the comments below and hope we can direct Microsoft to make that for us. Then the final thing that was exciting at the time that I watched the video was the incorporation of to do into Planner. Seemed like, you know, they even showed a graphic, the three things coming into one. I was like, ah, finally, a bit of simplification, having your own personal task list that you could view as a board or as a list seems to make sense and just get rid of to do incorporate into planner that seems very simple so in the new planner you've got my day so you can at any task whether you're assigned to it from anywhere any group plan or individual plans because now you can have individual plans instead of having to do you can add them to my day my tasks is anything that you've added in your personal tasks or anything that you're assigned to from any group plan similar to how it works now but I guess the main difference in new planner is you can have personal plans. Whether you want to view your list as a board or a list or timeline, then you've got all the functions of planner, but just segregate so no one else can see it. The only way you can do that at the moment is to just create your own plan or your own team, your own group, Microsoft group, and not invite anyone else to it, which obviously creates quite a lot of clutter. If you are an IT pro and have loads of groups with only one person in, that's not great. And the new planner fixes that. To manage all of that, you can see my plans, which is all of your personal plans and every plan that you've got access to in any Microsoft group or team. And you can pin ones to the sidebar. So all the new UI looks great and simple. Subsequent to the announcement, I guess, although they said the three things combined into one, to-do's coming into planner. What they then said is, well, to-do's not going anywhere. So I don't know if this is just a transition phase, like they're saying, well, project online isn't going anywhere. The desktop project isn't going anywhere just to placate people that have got lots of stuff in there. They haven't really thought about how to transition people over yet. But like the big benefit is like, well, if you're going to simplify, you don't then keep around all the baggage. So there's loads of questions then about to do. It's like, well, if I've got lots of groups and lists in to do, are they going to be replicated into personal plans? I don't think so. So if you create a personal plan, how's that going to show up in to do? Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it shows up as an assigned task in to do. So with the, the simplification, they're actually making things even more complicated in the transition period, rather than just biting the bullet and saying, look, this is the simplest way to do it. We're going to cull everything else. And if you want to keep it around, that's cool, that's legacy, but it is going to go. We recommend people use this new way. That isn't, that isn't the stance Microsoft has taken thus far. And so I hope they just don't mess up the implementation like they do with the new teams. They made it available way too early. People flick it on, realize they can't do something, get confused and then turn it off. I hope they don't do that with a new planner. It's looking like that might happen because the first phase is like renaming 
tasks by planner and to do in teams just to planner some of the new features are available in spring 2024 but then they're not keeping everything up to date at the same time so then the same well planner in the web is changing to the new planner later on in 2024 so it's like well if i look at planner in the web is that going to show me personal plans or is that only available in teams that's unclear it's like well if i want a premium feature in planner premium and see that in teams and I jump out into the web am i going to see that can i go into project on the web if i've played for planner premium and they're just two different things on the web version until later into 2024 that's unclear so I wish Microsoft would kind of just do, look, this is, this is what's going to happen and do it all at once rather than sort of eking stuff out like they'd done a few times with the new teams. Viva Engage was confusing. Again, they'd renamed, if you looked at Yammer in Teams, it was a Viva Engage app, but it showed you Yammer. And then only like a year later, they like, actually were renaming Yammer to Viva Engage, which completely makes sense. We should have just done it all in one go. So there is still quite a lot of nuance I'm still really excited and hopefully some of these changes would make people stop using Monday and ClickUp.com, I think, or at least make the barrier to jump out of the Microsoft ecosystem a little bit harder, which is good news because it is a bit of a pain to use something else. It's quite easy to jump out into third party tools because the licensing costs aren't huge when you're small, but as you grow, any other license costs tend to just stack up and up and up and you're quite invested in that other tool it's quite difficult to jump over and like i say it's been quite difficult to recommend to jump back because it, it hasn't been as good and now i think microsoft have actually got the infrastructure the right things they're focusing on to allow people to actually do what they want to do in tasks and project management in the microsoft 365 ecosystem which hasn't been around for quite a while usually what people want to do kind of falls through the cracks and i was hopeful when Microsoft announced they were changing lists a few years ago, so like they got a brand new UI, they had loads of WYSI videos, it looked really cool. It's like, ah, this looks like they're trying to compete with Monday.com. But then when it came out, it was just like a few different templates on top of SharePoint lists, which had been around for ages. They didn't really do anything. They're quite slow to do all the changes that they announced. And still, Microsoft list is really useful for very, very small number of use cases. And usually people start to do it, find out you can't do things and then get get annoyed and confused. And hopefully the new planner is going to solve some of those things. So I got excited about Microsoft List could be a replacement for Monday.com and ClickUp. Now I'm excited that the new planner is a place for that. But let me know what you think. Is the new planner going to be a Monday.com and a ClickUp killer? Let me know in the comments below. Are you excited about using it? Let me know. Really interested to hear your thoughts on this one. Before you go, if you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button and the bell icon if you haven't already. We've got new videos coming out on Microsoft at work at least every Tuesday. And thanks for watching so far. I'll see you in the next one.